usually haven't worn a dress shirt on Mondays, but it's cold out there. Yes. Joby's here. How you doing, Joby? I'm okay. And as you said, it's cold out there. Yeah, I know. I have been um, running behind is what I am. I'm, I'm, I'm going to admit something right here on air to the world. I'm still in my workout clothes <laughs> because I, I'm except with, with the exception of this jacket. But I uh, have been going since early, but man, I just had a lot to do and, and uh, trying to squeeze some things in before uh, coming to town and Mondays are always my busy, well, I'm kind of like probably everybody. Every day's busy, but um, <laughs> Monday mornings we have stuff here. Right. I, I try to come and, and be involved for the Pakes Valley Baptist, I mean, Bass Masters, there you uh, go. which is why I'm here with you this morning. And and then uh, a lot of other things happen on Monday mornings and Monday afternoons that are not a normal for me the rest of the week. So for whatever reason, I just... Um, I'm just running behind today. Yeah, well, it's you know, it's a new, first day of a new week, first of a new, of new, new year, month of a new year. Yeah. So you've got all that kind of stuff to do too. First, first work day, I guess I should say, of a new of the new year. Yeah. Um, with Saturday being New Year's Day, and of course Sunday being yesterday. But um, but glad to be here and um, looking forward to a great season with the uh, Pecos Valley Bassmasters. Um, probably my club thinks I haven't been. Uh, doing anything with the with anything because I hadn't sent any information out in a long time. I've been here with you Monday mornings, but I'm um, getting ready today to send out an email to all of our current uh, 2021 membership list. Mm -hmm. Plus, I'm gonna I'm gonna include um, the last few years membership list, even they even if they didn't join this uh, l this last year, just so that reminder, you know, we're still here, and if they want to fish with us. So that, that email is going to be coming out. I'm hoping I get it done this afternoon. I was striving to get it done this morning. I was working on multiple <laughs> things uh, having to do with uh, organizations I'm involved with, and, and Pecos Valley Bassmasters is one of those that I wanted to get information out today. So that's my plan. But we are going to have a meeting, and I'll go ahead and say that here on air. I'm planning a meeting um, not this coming Saturday, but a week from Saturday at 5 p.m., uh, I'm going to try something different uh, this first meeting this year, do it on a Saturday. We've got members kind of scattered here in the not only in the Pecos Valley, but southeast New Mexico. And I think it's easier for some of those guys to make it on a weekend than it is to try to get off work. You know, we, in, in previous years, at least the, the last few years that I've been the president, when we've had meetings, we've normally had them like on a weeknight, you mm -hmm. know, 6 p.m. on a Tuesday or something. But uh, but this first meeting of 2022, I'm gonna, I've got it scheduled for Saturday. The I'm gonna get I the date here. here. Yeah, it's not this coming, but the next, which is the 15th. 15th. Okay. So Saturday, the 15th at 5 p.m. It's gonna be at my church in our fellowship hall at Hermosa Drive Baptist Church, 2407 West Hermosa Drive, and um, uh, we're gonna have it there because I don't have to schedule anything with anybody at one of the other meeting places and. Uh, just going to have it the, at the church, but and all of that information will be sent out to all of our uh, members from this past year and the last three or four years. So if you're hearing this and you're going, "Oh, I didn't write that down," you're going to be getting an email uh, with a lot of information, including uh, the meeting, the meeting date, the meeting time, the meeting place, and the agenda for the meeting. So um, getting geared up, I wrote a, I, I worked on a tentative uh, schedule. Okay. That. Um, I'm going to present to the club, and then we, the last three years, we've done it that way where I've, I've come to our first meeting with a tentative schedule for the year, and then and then the club, of course, that's whatever we need and, to do. Yeah, you know. talk about it, and, and if there's things that are just too much of a conflict or if I've messed up and scheduled something on Easter or something, which I didn't, but <laughs> in years past, I've done it where I scheduled it on a weekend where everybody goes, what were you thinking? Where, you know, <laughs> uh, I tried to be very careful, uh, and I don't think I've done that, but... Um, so that information is going to come out hopefully by the end of today. I tried, I was thinking I would do it by the end of yesterday or first thing this morning, but it didn't yeah. happen yet. Well, you know, life life happens. Things come up and you got to get all that stuff figured out. I know you've talked about it before. The last couple of years have been a really real challenge on where to have fishing tournaments because of the COVID restrictions in New Mexico. So as you kind of look over your tentative schedule, are you hopeful that you'll be able to do some New Mexico lakes this year? I am. We are, uh, my tentative schedule includes um, four one-day tournaments on Brantley. 
okay. if we can get that accomplished. Um, um, tentatively, I'm, I'm wanting to do that for a number of reasons. Number one, it's right here. Mm -hmm. Number two, um, I'm hoping that some of the folks that are thinking about fishing or might consider fishing but not necessarily want to travel real far their first go at a tournament style club um you know they could fish that they could fish those brantley lake tournaments and and uh, i'm also looking at a tournament up at ute uh, lake um that i'm gonna that i've got on my tentative schedule and then um you know and obviously if, if other lakes are available of conscious you know la this last year we did fish conscious and ute um new mexico bass nation did um we had a lot of hurdles we had to get over to do that but uh, they were able to do it the new mexico bass nation and our club was involved in those as well and i'm um hoping to or at least i'm tentatively have it scheduled that we will fish in conjunction with new mexico bass nation this year again as a club and that way allow club members that want to fish the new mexico bass nation tournaments um, the opportunity to fish those and not have to try to schedule in another tournament with us in the same month. You know, bass fishing can be very expensive. Um, none of none of our guys that I know of are independently wealthy. It's not like we just, you know, we all work. And and so I, I try to do our best, or we I think we do as a club, try to schedule tournaments in conjunction with other tournaments that members of our club want to fish. And that way they can fish both if they choose to, but they're going to one lake at the same time. Mm -hmm. You know, they do have the added expense of the uh, entry fees, but really that would be the only added expense because they're going to be there anyway. Uh, so their, their uh, accommodations and their meals and things like that, they only have to pay for once. Um, so uh, that's the tentative schedule I've got that our club will be looking at. And I'm going to be sending that out with the email. So they'll have that to, to look at and to look at their schedules and to kind of ponder over, and then they can come to the meeting uh on the 15th at 5 p.m. to uh, discuss it and vote on it. Yeah. And then we'll get going. So there's a lot that I've got to get out there for our club membership. Um, hoping we've got some, um, we've got some tentative, or not tentative, we've got some, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Some um, uh, nominations for okay. some of our uh, offices, officers. Mm -hmm. And I'm hoping that, and I've reached out to some of those that, uh, that I was thinking about that people have said maybe we should nominate them. And so I've been the president. I think this is going to be my fourth year. And I'm, uh, I have told some of our members I'm ready to step down if someone is ready to step up. President really, honestly, there's not a whole lot that we do as the president of a club except for represent us, you know, at the state and national level. But even then we have a director that that's their job to do specifically as represent us at the state level. Um, but um, then conduct meetings, you know, call meetings if we need to have them, whatever. So uh, I'll be honest with you, the tougher jobs are the tournament director, which I've been the last three years as well, and then the treasurer, which really goes hand-in-hand hand with the tournament director because that's the majority of the time we write a check is for tournaments and the collection of the tournament fees and those things. So I'm hoping that we have some folks that are willing to step up and kind of take some of those jobs this year and looking forward to that and i think we do i think that there's several that are that are very involved in our club and that and they're going to be willing to do those things so looking forward to an exciting year with, with 2022 I've, I've i've said this several times in the last few times here on air with eugene that we've got a bunch of people that have reached out and said they want to join some previous members some members a long time ago hadn't fished with us in a long time but said hey we're gonna i want to fish and so i'm excited about that some really good anglers that have uh that have not only shown interest, they flat out said, we're, we're fishing with you. I'm fishing with you this year. Yeah. So that's exciting, and, and I'm hoping those guys will be able to come to that first meeting um, and be present and talk about the schedule and then and then have their, you know, go ahead and join the club and then have their say in it. So looking forward to that as well. Let me ask you this. Um, the last couple of years, because of the COVID restrictions in New Mexico, you haven't been able to have tournaments, or it's been difficult to have tournaments. Right. But that hasn't kept people from fishing, has it? Or how? Do, what do you anticipate the the bass population in New Mexico since we've been through this uh, this this period of time? Well, last year at the two lakes that we did fish in New Mexico in tournament settings, they were both very diff tough tournaments. Conscious and Ute both um, just were tough. Not a lot of fish caught, especially at Ute. 
Does it have more to do with the drought situation? I think in? maybe. I think the drought and also just weather conditions, maybe, you know, fronts that had gone through, things like that. I, I don't know. I'm not sure what to expect in terms of population of fish. I think they should be normal, which uh, the lakes that we normally fish as a club would be Brantley, mm -hmm. would be Conscious, would be Ute. Uh, we have fished Santa Rosa. We have have fished Fort Sumner in the past. We have fished Elephant Butte in the past. Uh, the lakes have been pretty low for the majority of our past. We've had some good rains different years where the lakes were close to full. But last year, lakes were all pretty down. Um, I'm not, I don't know what to expect. I know that a lot of our guys fish at Brantley a lot, you know, just go down there and fish because you said, what are people doing? Are they fishing? Yeah, people are still fishing. Uh, the lakes are open where people can get on the water. The big deal with tournaments is we we're supposed to fill out those those uh, those forms and and submit and say hey we're going to have a tournament there and that's where it's been difficult this last year or two because the lakes were under the the, the state parks were under those COVID regulations or and there was a lot of interpretation that could be there and so the lakes were interpreting some of those rules differently um, and uh, and allowed some tournaments. Um, Really, to fish in New Mexico as a New Mexico club is our goal. But because where we're located here in the Pecos Valley in southeast New Mexico, we're pretty close to Texas. And there's a lot of great, as we've discussed multiple times here, there's a lot of good Texas water that we get to fish. And so we're going to do that again, as we always have. We're going to fish Texas lakes. Um, but if we can mix back in some New Mexico lakes, we're going to do that as well. We'll just have to kind of wait and see. Uh, we may go ahead and schedule... The, like, for example, if we do schedule those Brantley tournaments, um, we'll probably be able to have those. We're anticipating we will. Uh, we're also anticipating probably being able to fish Ute or Conscious. So we'll just have to see how it goes. Well, I know the um, difficulty has been because of the, uh, the drought situation. You know, we had fairly decent moisture through last spring. Right. The early part of the summer. And then it's like the spigot just got shut off. Yeah, there was no participation, really, as you said. That's a good description of it, just the, the rains and snow and everything just yeah, turned off. It, it, it just stopped. And so here we are uh, again looking at lakes being low. We've yes. got to deliver water to Texas. Right. Uh, it's not going to be that long before Carlsbad says, uh, okay, we're taking our water. Right. And uh, that all has to be met. The, the, the lake... At Brantley and the fish and the fishing there is kind of secondary to these other commitments that not, the lake has. Not kind of. It's secondary. Yeah. I mean, it is secondary and, and, and probably for good reason. Mm -hmm. But even when Brantley is super low, you know, we have had in the past some decent tournaments there. It is a small lake anyway, and but our club is relatively small. It's not like we're going to have 40 boats on Brantley or we haven't. I think, you know, I think the maximum we've had since I've been fishing down there is around between 20 and 30, and that's a lot of boats for Brantley, but the lake was up when we had those tournaments. Right now, it's down. I mean, it got full, full, full this year. Mm -hmm. As you as you said, we had great rains in the spring. Brantley Lake was, was over, well, I don't know if it was ever over full, but it looked over full. If you drove right. by there, it was it looked big. Compared to what we Compared see now. Compared to what yeah. we see now, <laughs> and it's definitely down. I, I honestly don't know where it is on, on its capacity right now. It uh, just looks lower because of that big, the floods we had in the spring. I mean, it is lower, and it looks smaller. Uh, but Brantley's a local lake, and I'm hoping we get, we can fish it uh, for those one-day tournaments and get some local anglers involved that maybe haven't been involved in the past. Again, because it's, you don't have to travel. Right. You know, they're basically right here. Even even if they're in Hobbs or Lovington or Carlsbad or Roswell or up anywhere here in the valley, you know, it's not that far of a drive. It's not driving four or five hours to get to a lake. Yeah. Well, they have nice facilities there. I mean, it's 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 a nice area yeah. for picnicking and for camping and yep. I'm, I'm assuming for fishing, too. It's, yep. Yep. It's a, it's a good deal. All right. It's uh, 10.04. We've got about a minute or so left. Is there anything else you'd like to add? Just uh, just to re-say that we're going to have our first meeting for 2022 on January 15th at 5 p.m. here in Artesia at Hermosa Drive Baptist Church. If you have been a member any time in the last three or four years and I have your information, you'll be receiving a an email. And, and I'm going to put it in the email that if you don't, want to receive anything in the future you know you're say you're done with fishing or you're just not interested you can either i'm going to ask you people opt to out opt out just tell me you know shoot me an email saying hey i'm not I'm not interested and then that way i can take them off the list i won't bother them with emails or texts um so looking forward to that 
and uh, getting our schedule done and getting out there and fishing. All right. Thank you very much. Look forward to having you come on and talk about it on All right. Monday. So. Thanks. All right, that's going to wrap up the show. Big thanks to our friends at Kith and Kin for uh, providing us with all the wonderful coffee and uh, snacks that we have in the box over here. And we'll be back. Ryder Champion. We're going to have a phone call with Ryder in the morning. He has some things he'd like to share with everyone. So we're looking forward to that coming up tomorrow on Good Morning Artesia. Today's KSVIP is Nancy R. Johnson. Nancy is recently retired. She's been married for 32 years. And this is just because Nancy is such a wonderful person. She'll do anything to help anyone who asks, including helping folks load up dog food at the store. Today, Nancy, you're going to receive a flower from Love Bud Floral and KSVP. Today's KSVIP, Nancy R. Johnson.